We are totally unaware that our food supply, medications, and sometimes even the air we breathe are filled with these fungal poisons fully capable of causing symptoms and diseases in humans. Stay tuned and let the learning begin. You know, it's so interesting what these old medical textbooks, 60, 70 years old, say about cancer. This show is going to be totally on cancer. You know, in 1971, Richard Nixon pledged war on cancer with a $1 billion a year pledge, federal pledge. We're going to beat this evil disease. Here we are decades later, and we haven't beat the evil disease. As a matter of fact, from 1950 to now, cancers really only decreased about 5% when you factor in our aging population and diseases and so forth. So where are we really with this disease? And what did these books know that today's medical textbooks really didn't know? And don't we have a built-in system, several of them, that should defeat a germ if cancer was a fungus or if it's a bacteria. If it comes in our body, don't we have a system built in, an immune system to defeat this disease? Well, today I'm gonna to take you through a slide presentation and teach you a little bit about what I think the war on cancer should be all about. Not more money, just more common sense. It's no longer mycotoxicosis. We now call this new disease cancer. Isn't that weird? We inject fungus into laboratory animals and they all get fungus. No, they all get cancer. Are we getting close to your better understanding what this cancer is? I gave this presentation out in Los Angeles, September 2013, to a large group, a cancer organization. It's in tribute to all of them that we go ahead and give it again, but they gave me 25 minutes, so I've got to get right to the slides so you can absorb all of this information. Maybe not all cancers, but some might be intimately linked with what doctors don't know about yet. There's about 100 autoimmune diseases, one of which is cancer. What causes this disease? That's what I hope to delve into with you today. Whatever its name will remain deadly until our doctors and researchers understand or know the cause. So let's start at the very beginning. What causes cancers? Says one newsletter, all cancers are thought to be caused by genetic mutations, and that seems to be the consensus today. Uh, some claim, however, that gene fusion initiates uh, cancer growth, and we'll uh, display that for you, says cancer cells. But I say fun fungus mimics cancer, and that far too often cancer is a misdiagnosis. Bear with me here, the doctor's watching. Here are some compelling facts about the fungus link to cancer. Sometimes, we miss the cause. This medical book from 1957 said in four instances, this is Johns Hopkins medical book, it said in four instances we miss the cause. Look at this. This fungus is suggestive of metastatic malignancy cancer. This fungus, page 115, says this fungus is frequently mistaken for squamous cell carcinoma or cancer. Page 153, histoplasmosis is found to coexist with leukemia and lymphosarcoma, sarcoidosis and Hodgkin's disease much more frequently than is statistically justifiable based on just coincidence. In other words, they do the cut downs on the patients and find fungus instead of the cancer. Disseminated cryptococcus is another one, closely simulates neoplasm. Folks, they were confused in 1957. Do you think today they're any less confused? This is a huge problem. But back then, 50, 60 years ago, they said cancer, and it was fungus. Here's a strand of DNA. Here's a gen genetic mutation. See the break in the DNA strand. Here is what happens when two genes get together, one from a plant, and one from a human, could that happen? Or a plant-like substance? Look at this. Similarities between human and fungal cells. Both human and fungal cells are eukaryotic. Their cells contain a distinct membrane, bound nucleus. And in the nucleus, we have DNA. Did you know that, that fungus has DNA like human DNA? Both use external food sources for energy. Fungi get in our bodies, parasitize us for their food. If DNA from the two, a human and a plant-like, uh, fungus should merge inside our bodies, what would the end result look like or what would it be? Also, don't we have safeguards against such an occurrence? We do indeed, but do they work? That's where we need to go. Here's my cancer hypothesis. This is what happens when fungal DNA converges with human DNA inside our body and forms a lump. And this lump is called an ascomycete. This is a hybrid DNA that I call cancer. Fungus and cancer. 
Cancer, says Dr. Milton White, is neither the result of a virus nor the consequence of an inherited gene defect. And yet we all hear that every day. If your mom had breast cancer, you're going to have it. Cancer is a hybrid. He's right. It is due to a plant bacterium. He's close. Plant fungus, I believe, because conidia live inside these plant uh, sacs, derived from a sac ascomycete strain of fungus. Dr. Milton White, God bless him, uh, he died a few years after he published this, but I had the chance to meet with him. Can fungus even cause human disease? Look at this, out of a major medical book, Medical Mycology. In the course of time, about 69,000 species of fungi have been recognized and described. Probably a million and a half exist. We haven't found a whole bunch of them. You can do the math. The comprehensive list of all the fungi that have been incriminated as opportunistic human pathogens, they cause disease in man, may well exceed 400 species. Now, this is one I really need to teach you about. This is called aflatoxin B1. This is the most carcinogenic substance known to man, and yet, it's in the cereal you had this morning. So says the Journal of the American Medical Association. It's in the bagel we're eating. It's in some of the foods we're getting. Pathogenic disease-causing fungi make poisonous byproducts called mycotoxins. Myco means fungus, toxic is poison. Several thousand mycotoxins have been identified and have been linked to human illness. One of the most toxic is called aflatoxin B1. It's made by the aspergillus mold. It causes human liver cancer and has been found in the blood of children with leukemia and in uncured tobacco leaves. Fresh tobacco doesn't cause cancer. That's a whole other story. It causes DNA mutations. Ironically, aflatoxin B1 and other mycotoxins commonly contaminate the American grain supply. Why is it that alcohol is a carcinogen? Every doctor knows alcohol that we drink causes cancer. Here's why. Grains make alcohol. Alcohol is the mycotoxin. It's the poison made by the fungus or the yeast, uh, brewer's yeast. Alcohol producers often use grains that are too contaminated with fungi and these poisonous byproducts to be used for table food. So the risk is higher that you are consuming more than just alcohol in your beverages. You know where I'm going. Folks, the standard American diet is bread and pasta and cereal and corn. It's absolutely amazing to me, and it's okay, so says medical science, if we have a glass or two of alcohol each evening. And yet this says, wait a minute, we're drinking mycotoxins, and mycotoxins are listed, and alcohol is listed on the known carcinogens, the known cancer-causing agents. Now, how uh, what tissue do these fungi impregnate and what diseases might ensue? When we get back, I'll delve into that for you. I think the reason that we get exceptional results is because fungus is everywhere and we deal with that possibility in every patient we see. No matter what their symptoms are, we always think about fungus. Okay, for television purposes, this has to go very quickly. Remember, I've got to get it done quickly, but it's on our website, knowthecause.com. You can go there, slow it down, or even stop the slides. Fungal mycotoxins are, this is tiny. Here's a relevant one. They change human genetic material. Here's a relevant one. They cause cancer in humans, teratogenic birth defects, genotoxic, they poison our DNA. Here's another important one, they're immunosuppressive, but also the liver, the kidneys, the heart, the bloodstream, the liver, these are all affected negatively by mycotoxins. And to think that our alcohol and our bread and so forth have tiny bits of these mycotoxins in them is just amazing. The three major genera of these mycotoxin-producing fungi are Aspergillus, Fusarium, and Penicillium. Wait a minute, did I say Penicillium? Each is a sac-forming fungi called an ascomycete. Aspergillus also grows in little tiny balls in the lungs called aspergillomas. They mimic lung cancer. Doctors will tell you this. The major crops affected are corn, peanuts, and wait a minute, cotton. We don't eat cotton. How relevant is that? Look at this. Antibiotics. Penicillium is the fungus. Penicillin is the poison. Certainly physicians would not believe such a risk exists for penicillin, an antibiotic given to billions of us. However, it is by definition a mycotoxin, and mycotoxins do cause cancer, so says the book Fungal Bionics by three doctors with the World Health Organization. In 1993, researchers Bernstein and Ross discovered that this is important. Greater than or equal to two months of staying on antibiotics significantly increased the risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, I've always had this problem. If, in fact, a mycotoxin induces a growth in our body, 
Why do we change the name? Why isn't it a mycotoxicosis we have instead of a cancer we have? And what about this cotton? We don't eat cotton. How are we being exposed to it and why is it a danger when it comes to cancer? Don't go away, we'll be right back. Okay, I backed up a couple of slides here just to kind of recap, but we said the three major important fungi, one of them is penicillium. We went over penicillin, but we didn't go over cotton. These are the crops most commonly contaminated. Corn I understand, peanuts I understand, but cotton. Then I told you a little bit about antibiotics and cancer. Look at this. I read in a journal that these poor women who die of toxic shock syndrome die of a cancer-like disease. Doctors don't know why they're dying, but here's a suggestion. A Texas woman found an unexpected substance growing on an unused tampon. It was mold. Uh, she dropped it on the floor and look, folks, I don't know what kind I put here, although the offending mold was never uh, publicized. One Egyptian study found this 87% of cotton seeds impregnated with aspergillus fungi that makes that poison called aflatoxin B1. I've got to move quickly here because we've got a lot of ground to cover. Mycotoxin-induced genetic mutations. Even the American Cancer Society says mycotoxins are mutagenic carcinogens. But cancer specialists don't diagnose cancer with mycotoxins in mind. The data is there, but their application is not. Simply search PubMed and aflatoxin-induced cancer, type those three words in, and 1,300 papers pop up for review. This is not new, this is not controversial, but it is simply not taught. How do we study cancer? Let's go to the basis. I worked for a short time at USC Medical School with Dr. Everett Hughes. And we were up on the ninth floor, and on the fifth floor, they had all these dogs and rabbits and pigs and so forth that they were studying diseases on. First, we must give any animal we're going to study cancer. How do we do that? We inoculate them with the mycotoxin aflatoxin B1. We also induce diabetes in labs by inoculating them with a different mycotoxin called streptozotocin. That's a whole nother class, whole nother day. We'll talk about diabetes. Aflatoxin B1 is the most poisonous to the liver, the most cancer-causing agent, and is established as a risk factor for liver cancer. Mycotoxicosis, you need to know that name. Any illness caused by fungal mycotoxins, a hangover, not that I've had them, but you may have, a hangover is called a mycotoxicosis. You wake up and you just feel sick to your stomach. You were poisoned by mycotoxins. They're called alcohol, okay? Mycotoxicosis, when researchers inject aflatoxin B1 into them, they get sick. But after inoculating them, the researchers simply change the name of their sickness. It's no longer mycotoxicosis. We now call this new disease cancer. Isn't that weird? We inject fungus into laboratory animals and they all get fungus. No, they all get cancer. Are we getting close to your better understanding what this cancer is? So is it cancer or is it a chronic mycotoxicosis? Here's the similarities between fungi and cancer. Both metabolize nutrients in the absence of oxygen. In other words, that lump can grow under your arm or on your neck or in the breast or in the prostate without oxygen. Nobody's blowing air in there, but you notice it's getting larger and larger and larger. Ascomycetes, fungal sacs do that, and so do cancer tumors. Both must have sugar in order to thrive. Both die in the absence of sugar. Both produce a corrosive substance called lactic acid. Both respond to antifungal medicines. Look at an antifungal agent lowers PSA levels. And here's a doctor that discovered that leukemia went into remission when he put the children on antifungal drugs. This is huge, folks. This is, this is not minute. This discovery is huge. And I've just been a puzzle builder all of my career, putting other people's work. I'm an empirical theorist. I put other people's work together to form what my hypothesis says is the cause of cancer. Cheap antifungal drug may fight cancer. Antibiotic used to kill fungal infections also kills cancer cells. It's called griseofulvin. Antifungal drug treats cancer. Isn't this just amazing? No doctor gets this. If you give an antifungal drug to a patient, the cancer doesn't metastasize. We'll discuss that now. I think that's important. We have two safeguards in place that protect us from fungal growth in our body. One is called the P53 gene. The other is white blood cells gobbling up debris, phagocytosis. Whether it's called a chronic mycotoxicosis or cancer, why don't these guys protect us? Here's the American cancer. This is the good guy gene. We all have it. It's the most studied of all genes, the P53 gene, because damage to this gene, says the American Cancer Society, allows cells with damaged DNA to proliferate. Bingo. What 
damages the gene. The p53 mutation is identified in over half of all cancers. The mycotoxin aflatoxin B1 made by Aspergillus fungus, fungus is known to damage p53. Aflatoxin genotoxicity is associated with a defective DNA damage response bypassing our Superman gene, the P53. Man, that's huge. Your doctor says you have pancreatic or lung cancer because he did a CA199 test on you. But it also tests for things like ulcerative colitis, and look at this. It tests for fungal infections with aspergillus, which is an ascomycete fungus. They're so close. I read this online the other day. The headline said, metastatic tumor is a hybrid of cancer cell and white blood cell. What? You mean they've done it? A white blood cell and a, and a cancer cell get together and form a hybrid? What's a cancer cell? There were, our results provide for the first time in humans that metastasis can occur when a white blood cell and a cancer cell form and fuse into a hybrid. This is my opinion. Cancer is a chronic mycotoxicosis that initiates when DNA from a white blood cell and DNA from a sac fungus converge. This new genetic hybrid formation forms in a sac that resembles a cancer tumor and begins reproducing. Remember, I said fungal DNA merges with human DNA to form a hybrid sac. Biopsies, folks, I think biopsies very often cause metastasis. When we go in and we pull a lump out of a breast, it bleeds. What if fungus and their mycotoxins is in that blood? It's a contagion, just like ringworm is a contagion. It's caused by a fungus. So what I'm going to show you now, and then we'll continue after this short video, is a video of colon cancer that we had to go in, the doctor had to go in and do a biopsy on. Watch the blood that forms as we go into this break. I think this is a very, very important demonstration. Here you have the colon been isolated. There's the biopsy. Ouch! Boom! And watch slowly here in the next few seconds and you'll see blood form in these two pockets. Remember, sitting up against that, this is for surgery, sitting up against that is more Colon tissue is the bloodstream. This is a very vascular area of the body, and I contend that it's this blood that causes metastasis of cancer, okay? Don't go away, a whole lot of exciting parts to come in this analysis. I think the, the important thing to know is Diflucan is probably the most powerful tool against systemic fungus all through your body. Is it beginning to make sense are you now able to see that there is a diet for cancer patients to be on because cancer doctors know nothing of this? Many of you are on a gluten-free diet or a paleo diet or an Adkins diet. They're all grain-free diets. No wonder they work so well. Does it have really to do with the sugar in the diet that the grain converts to? Or is it really mycotoxins? Is it gluten or is it mycotoxicosis? So here, you just saw the colon biopsy, right? You saw the blood coming out. Well, in order to confirm that that does uh, lead to metastasis, some big university should put patients on antifungal drugs when they have cancer and see if it stopped metastasis, cancer from spreading around the body. Oh, they did. It's called Johns Hopkins. Antifungal drug stops cancer from metastasizing by inhibiting spreading of the cancer. Researchers at Johns Hopkins have discovered, and I love this, I left it in, to their surprise that a drug commonly used to treat toenail fungus, Sporinox, could also block the growth of new blood vessels commonly seen in cancer. They did this in 2007. They repeated it in 2011. Why aren't antifungal drugs used for every cancer patient? I don't have any idea. More fungus-induced cancer genes. The doctor will say your C-mic is elevated, your NRAS is elevated, you must, your cancer must be getting worse. Oh, wait a minute. Induced by the mycotoxin aflo, aflatoxin B1 from aspergillus. That's what causes these tumor markers. That's one of the things that causes the tumor markers to go up. So why don't our white blood cells protect us? You guys and I all learned in, in high school and college the word phagocytosis. Recall mycotoxin suppress immunity. Normally, these bad guy yeasts or fungus would, uh, would be recognized as foreign and devoured by our immune system. This is a primary mechanism that prevents infections in us. In the case of fungal infections from this medical book, 1989, uh, sometimes phagocytosis fails. This fungus escapes phagocytosis because the spores are surrounded by a thick, viscous capsule. Now you know the name of that, by the way. The capsule is called an ascomycete. A, a thick, viscous capsule that these endospores keep growing and growing and the lump gets bigger and bigger. But the same book said, in tissue, yeast cells of histoplasma are found 
in white blood cells only. However, phagocytosis does not always lead to killing, and the intracellular habitat paradoxically protects the fungus. Fungus always wins, folks. When you die, it gobbles up the liver and your bones and your eyes. That's just the way it works. Your job is to keep it held at bay with antifungals, proper diet, and so forth. Fungi cause inaccurate lab results. This is huge. Fungi and smears are often overlooked, being confused with the patient's white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. Spurious automated and manual platelet counters uh, prove that yeast cells have been mistaken for blood platelets. This is huge, and it's nobody's fault. Man isn't using the Marbell blood counters anymore. Machines are doing it, and they're seeing platelets, and they're saying, or they're saying platelets, and it's fungus floating through those machines. Let's talk about the PSA. Does it really diagnose prostate cancer? Structurally, this thing tests for five different ascomycete fungi, an enzyme produced by these five uh, molds, okay? Look at this. The New York Times said, in approving the PSA, the FDA relied heavily on a study that showed testing could detect 3.8% of prostate cancers. You feeling good about this, guys? Hmm? The PSA test. Each year, some 30 million American men undergo uh, testing for prostate-specific antigen at a cost of $3 billion. According to the American Cancer Society, prostate-specific antigen is a substance made by cells in the prostate gland. Right? They're wrong. They aren't made, according to these three doctors at the World Health Organization, they aren't made by cells in the prostate gland, they're made by five fungus. So the whole basis of the test may be an error. Doctors believe that the PSA is an enzyme made by cells in the prostate gland. In fact, World Health Organization doctors say that there are five different fungi. Have millions of men subjected themselves to an expensive fungal test or a prostate cancer test? Antifungals, anyone? Vitamins and minerals are antifungal. Psyllium is. Amino acids are. Fatty acids like omega-3 fatty acids. Vegetables and fruits are antifungal. Spices, coconut, and many more foods are antifungal. Zinc kills both fungus and mycotoxins. So does garlic, and so do some of these uh, uh, citrus oils. Probiotics inhibit fungal infections from ever setting up. And, and this before we go to the break. Why isn't this known? Why doesn't anybody know about this? Look at this. From the American Academy of Microbiology. The Bible, if you will, for microbiologists. Fungi are the cause of many outbreaks of disease, but are mostly ignored. Wow. Fungi can cause a number of life-threatening diseases. Many people, scientists among them, are largely unaware. Is that shocking? This isn't new, folks, and it isn't my discovery alone. I'm just a guy who put together some of the pieces. There was a book written a long time ago that talked about mold as being insidious and disease-causing. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Fungus makes mycotoxins. Mycotoxins have bad effects on people. Pretty much if there's a medical disease, there's a mycotoxin out there that can cause it. You know, I understand not everyone reading a 1957 medical book that was confused. Is it cancer? Is it fungus? But there's another reason not many of us know about this fungus cause of human disease. We asked the question in the last segment, why isn't this known? We talk about these old medical books, and I've referenced a lot of medical books in this, but look at this, biblical fungus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when you enter the land of Canaan, which I'm giving you, and I put a spreading mildew, that's a fungus, in a house in this land, the owner of the house must go and tell the priest, I have seen something that looks like mildew in my house. Now the NIV Bible footnotes this. Why was mildew so dangerous? This fungus could spread rapidly and promote disease. And look at this. Best-selling book taught about fungus long ago. In the books of Moses, there are 32 references to avoiding yeast in various religious practices. Symbolically, Theopedia says, symbolically, the removal of yeast from the bread shows removal of sin from our lives. Has this been totally overlooked? What did we learn? Let's summarize. We finally know there's a diet to prevent cancer because we know that alcohol and grains and corn and some of these other foods contribute to growth of fungus in our body that may mimic cancer, folks. And we've also discovered that I think many doctors come up to me now and say, Doug, I'm giving my cancer patients antifungal drugs. Why not? When you've got major medical schools saying this inhibits metastasis, it can inhibit angiogenesis, which is how metastasis occurs. Why wouldn't all doctors look at this? And then you have the big study that I wrote in there, and I've been in touch with that doctor that says cancer cells and human blood cells, the DNA of those get together and form a hybrid. They're so, so close. 
what is a cancer cell? If it's a fungal cell, they've discovered the same thing I have. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you give it to your doctor and your friends and you continue learning. Bye-bye.